This is Calculus Review, Section 1.2, Functions and Their Graphs, Part 1. A function is a relation where any two ordered pairs with the same x value also has the same y value. In other words, every input has exactly one output. The independent variable is x. Sometimes it's not called x, so in general that's the input. The dependent variable is y, sometimes not called y, so in general we'll call it the output. An example of a function is a equals pi r squared. Let's look at a function right now. This is x squared plus 2y equals 1. It makes sense to solve for the output explicitly so we can evaluate it easier. Here I am solving for y. Now we have an explicit function where y is very clearly a function of x, whereas in the beginning we had an implicit function. Furthermore, because this is a function, instead of saying y equals, I can say f of x equals, which just denotes very easily that this is a function that inputs x. Let's take a look at another example. A function of x is 2x squared minus 4x plus 1. But what if we replaced our input? Instead of x, what if we input purple dot? Well, we'll just replace x everywhere it was with a purple dot. So, if I replace purple dot with negative 2, the same thing will follow. We'll just replace all the locations of x with negative 2. Then we can use some algebra to simplify to our answer of 17. Sometimes the notation can look a little different. For example, we could input t or another variable instead of x. We could also name our function something like g instead of f. This one inputs s. Let's do an example. We're going to input 3a into the function. Anywhere there was x, now there's 3a. Next, we're going to input b minus 1. b minus 1 is a binomial, so we're going to have to expand this. I'm going to do this by doing a double distribution instead of a normal FOIL. So I'm going to distribute b from the first binomial into both b and negative 1 in the second binomial. So that'll be b squared and minus b. And then I'll distribute negative 1 into the second binomial. Negative 1 times b is negative b. And negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. There's also a plus 7 on the end. Now I can just collect all of my like terms together, and traditionally we always put the variables in descending order of degree. So the b squared first, then the b term, then the constant. Let's look at this last one. Let's back up and take a look at the whole thing. Remember that f of something is a single function. Let me color code that for us. This whole first part is a single term. Then it's minus another term, which is f of x, which by the way we have. And then the whole thing is over delta x. So this entire thing is actually just three terms. We're showing you this now because this is going to end up being quite famous and well known in the beginning of your calculus journey. Let me change f of x, the function, to a color code of blue and delta x to green. f of x we already have, so that's the blue piece. What we need is the purple piece, so let's do that. Just like replacing an input with purple dot, now we're just replacing the input with x plus delta x. That's a binomial, which means we're going to have to expand it. I'm going to do it using double distribution again. The x from the first binomial is going to distribute to x to make x squared, and delta x to make x delta x. And then the delta x from the first binomial is going to distribute to x to make another x delta x, and distribute to delta x to make a delta x squared. Finally, there's plus 7 to the end. 
pause and take a look at it to make sure you understand it, because introducing delta x does make things look a little bit hairier. I see that we have two x delta x's. So I'm going to rewrite. I'm going to have x squared. I'm going to have 2x delta x. I'm going to have delta x, the quantity squared, and a plus 7. So this is the fully simplified purple piece. And we're going to replace the purple piece with this. And in fact, I'm going to cheat a little, and I'm going to copy and paste it in. Once I do that, it's going to be the purple piece minus the blue piece, which is just f of x. We have that. So it's going to be minus the quantity x squared plus 7. And then the whole thing is over delta x minus the entire blue piece means we're going to be minusing x squared and minusing 7. That's great because we're going to end up canceling our 7s and our x squareds. Let's rewrite this now, and I ran out of room, so I'm going to write it to the left, with all of our remaining terms. Once we rewrite it with our remaining terms, we can catch that there is actually a delta x in each and every one of these terms. So we can cancel one from each and get a more simplified answer of 2x plus delta x. Domains and ranges are the set of all inputs and the set of all outputs. In this example, we have an explicit domain. It's given to us very specifically, and we can use the notation to say this is the domain. In this example, we'll call it g of x, we are not given the domain, so there's an implied domain. And in fact, that's going to be that x cannot be plus or minus 2, because there's only two rules. You can't divide by 0, and you can't take the square root of a negative. Don't forget those two rules for domain and range. In this example, we should be thinking about the rule that you can't have the square root of a negative. So we can easily find where that location is by setting the piece under the square root equal to 0, because we know that that's the limitation. That's the smallest that x can be. And that's going to be at the location x equals 1. Because that location outputs 0, that's the smallest output you can have. So y has to be bigger or equal to 0. Sometimes you might be thrown because we'll look at something where the rules don't really apply. Tangent of x is something that we need to memorize the domain and range of. Tangent is all inputs such that x cannot equal pi over 2 plus or minus n pi, where n is some integer. Here's a reminder of what tangent looks like. Remember that there's an asymptote at every pi over 2. So when we write it, we'll write it just like that. Now, the domain looks like this, but the range, and we can write it a few ways, I show a few examples here, is going to be all reals. In the final example, since x is less than 1 and x is greater than or equal to 1 is all represented, that means all reals are represented for the domain. For y, we have to obey the don't take the square root of a negative, so we'll find the place where it equals 0, and we'll find that y has to be greater than or equal to 0. A one-to-one -one function is a specialized function where for every output, there is exactly one input. This type of function not only passes the vertical line test, but it also passes the horizontal line test. So for every input, there's exactly one output. It's a function. But also for every output, there's exactly one input, one to one. Let's look at the graph of a few different possible functions. So I'm going to draw a few graphs, and we're going to do some tests so that we can see whether or not they're functions and one-to-one. -one. So here are our examples. This one we'll call f of x. This one we'll call g of x. And this one we'll call h of x. 
Now, when I do some test vertical lines, I go through more than one location at most places, so this is not a function. Here, I only ever go through one location vertically, but I can go through more than one location horizontally, so it's not one-to-one. -one. And the same thing happens here. Passes vertical, fails horizontal. The last part of this video is the eight major function graphs that you really need to have memorized at this point. You need to be able to see all of the following graphs and be able to know exactly what their equations are. And in fact, there's kind of nine because it says sine and cosine, but we should also have tangent memorized as well. And we'll finish this section in part two.